Hello and welcome to Global Connection ESL. In our last video, we talked about gerunds. I hope this was a useful video for you. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. So click below and join. You will get updates regularly when you do. Today I'm going to talk about infinitives, part two in this series. Infinitives will also help you in your reading and writing. When you understand infinitives, you will be able to write much higher level sentences. So let's jump in. Before we learn how to use infinitives, let's talk about what their function is and what they are. An infinitive is something in a sentence where you use to plus the base form of a verb, such as to write. And any time that you have an infinitive, it can function as different parts of the sentence. It can be the subject, it could be an object of the verb or a preposition, it could be a subject complement. It also has functions as adjectives and adverbs in sentences. Infinitives of purpose are helpful for us when we think of the reason to use infinitives. Think about in order to or to as answering this question why. Why did we come to school? We came to school in order to study English. We can say in order to or we can just say to study English. We came to school to study English. It tells the reason why. The second example says I went to the store to buy a new coat. Why did I go to the store? I went to the store to buy a new coat. And a third example says, she went to the concert in order to hear her favorite singer. Can you tell me why she went to the concert? It is very common to see infinitives after adjectives. Look at these examples. I was surprised to hear that there was a flood. Surprised is an adjective. To hear is the infinitive. He is determined to finish his essay before the weekend. Here, determined is being used as an adjective. To finish is the infinitive. She will be glad to help with the dishes. Do you like to do dishes? It's a big job, isn't it? Here, glad is the adjective and to help is the infinitive. And the last example, everyone is afraid to go into the haunted house. Afraid is the adjective, to go is the infinitive. Have you ever been to a haunted house? It is also common to see infinitives used with to and enough. Look at these examples. The math problem is too hard for Jerry to solve. Here we see the connection of too hard to solve. And remember, T-O-O -O has a different meaning than T-O. Look at the second example. It is too easy for Mary to tell a secret. Too easy to tell. Another case here we have an adjective plus enough. Hannah is fast enough to win the race. Fast is the adjective and enough is used before to win the infinitive. They have enough money to buy a car. Here we have enough plus a noun, then the infinitive. Enough money to buy a car. This is a higher level of the use of infinitives, but there are cases where passive infinitives are used. This example says, I didn't expect to be given the expensive gift. Here, to be given is a passive form of an infinitive. Look at the other examples. We hope to be invited to the graduation ceremony. To be invited is the passive infinitive. She wants to be told the truth about whether she has cancer or not. To be told is the passive infinitive. And the last example, the furniture in the new apartment needs to be arranged. To be arranged is the passive infinitive. 
There are cases where infinitives will drop the use of to before it. So look here at these examples. In this simple form, let's go have a latte at Starbucks. We don't say let's go to have. We just say let's go have. The second example says I let my son use my computer. Let use. So let plus infinitive. But in this case we do not use to. Let to use is a mistake. My teacher let me visit the elementary school. Let visit is let plus the infinitive. But again, visit does not take to before it. Other examples. My friend helped me get a driver's license. Help get. Help plus infinitive. They helped me make a new recipe. Help make. And the last example, could you help me find a good apartment? In this case, we see help plus find is help plus the infinitive, but the simple form is used without to. Causative verbs are also used for infinitives, and you'll notice here are three examples using make, have, and get, but there's a little difference here. With make, let's see the example. His mother made him do his chores. Make plus do. Make plus do also does not take to. So if you say make to do, it's usually not correct. The second example says, I had the mechanic change my tires. Have change. Have plus infinitive. In this case, again, we don't use to before change. However, look at get. In the third example, we, we say, he got his girlfriend to pay for the dinner. In this case, get to pay is used with get plus infinitive. In this case, to is used before the verb. You'll often find infinitives being used in sentences where there are attitudes, opinions, and feelings with verbs such as want, would like, hope, expect, seem. I want to drink coffee. I would like to wear a costume, but I am too shy. I hope to get a high score on the IELTS. Well, that's a little bit more about gerunds and infinitives. Now that we've gone through part two of this series, was this helpful for you? Do you have any questions you want to ask? Please leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer your questions. Also, please like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. The next video will talk more about the comparisons and some of the specific details when we compare gerunds and infinitives. I look forward to seeing you next time. See you soon.